And now we get to talk about the thing that everybody as a beginning aerobatic student wants to learn, and that's how to do the loop. And uh, the loop is a lot of fun, and it's actually one of the easier maneuvers to learn, as well as fairly easy on the airplane. And uh, the pilot can't hardly screw this up when they're new. And it still looks like something impressive, and you really feel like you've done something. And so uh, it's nice in a lot of ways. Um, as we get into doing aerobatic competition, on the other hand, the loop becomes the bane of the pilot's existence because it is very hard to make a loop perfectly round because that's what the judging standard is. Because uh, again, well, with the arresty symbol, we start with the dot, we end with the line, and we're going to go this way around the loop. And you see it drawn as a perfect circle. The way that most people do a loop, a nice good old fat barnstormer's loop, is the air, the, it tends to be taller than it is wide. And that's okay. And so in aerobatic competition, you're going to be spending a lot of time on this portion right here, trying to round this loop out. And here's where you're in a very low energy state. So here's the high G, high speed portion of the maneuver up to the middle of quarter number two. We'll explain that here in a second. And then here is where you're in the low speed, low G portion of the loop. And this is where you can, if you do this wrong as a new person, you can get the airplane into where it doesn't want to stay up there, maybe wants to flutter out of the maneuver, and now you have to do the maneuver recovery. Now, you always want to make sure that you never do these maneuvers with a normal category or utility category airplane. You must have an aerobatic category airplane to do these maneuvers. Okay, that's just the only way about, around it. Because you could possibly do some of these maneuvers in a normal category airplane uh, if everything went right. But the second that you, uh, if there's a slight mistake and the airplane falls out of the maneuver, the recovery will probably exceed the airplane's capabilities if it's not an aerobatic airplane. So never, never, never do aerobatic maneuvers in an airplane that's not built for it and that's not stressed for it. Because it's not just doing the maneuver, it's the recovery for falling out of a, a, a mishandled maneuver, okay, and things like that. And also rudder capability. Uh, anti-spin capability. There's a lot that goes into an aerobatic airplane. So never do any maneuvers in a non-aerobatic airplane. Okay. So as we talk about the loop, uh, again, when you're learning it, you'll do it like a good old-fashioned barnstormer's loop where it'll be kind of tall and you won't spend a lot of time on this portion right here at the top. Okay. Uh, you see that what we've done, that even though you fly the, the loop in thirds, so the first third, the middle, and then the last third, you analyze it in quarters. And so as we pull up, we're going to start over here, and as we pull up into the loop, there's the first quarter right there. And this quarter is the one that defines the rest of the loop. Because from the judging standard, this quarter is free. However you set up this first quarter, how tight it is or how wide it is, whatever the radius is here, you have to then duplicate it three more times. So, and that, what you want to do, first of all, is you need to pull enough G here, and you need to make this tight. But it's going to be hard for you to do that because your fastest speed is right here. So you want to dive, you want to get your entry speed, and you never want to begin a maneuver uh, without enough energy or altitude to do it. So here you're going to be fast, and so you need to pull hard against that speed to convert that speed uphill and make this radius small because when you're in your low energy state over here in quarter number two and quarter number three, it'll be hard to duplicate it if you've made it wide. And the other thing, especially in the lower horsepower airplanes like a Satabri or a Decathlon, you don't have enough horsepower to get around a bigger loop. You need to make the loop small. And the only way to do that is to pull hard enough and make this radius small. You need to pull at least three Gs. Three to four Gs is about optimum in one of the lower horsepower airplanes that most people will fly in Sportsman. So as you pull into this, and you're pulling 3 to 4 G here, then you need to keep rounding this loop out until about the middle of quarter number two. Now here is where you're going to start easing off the stick and trying to float over the top. You still want to maintain probably about a half a G of positive G so even though you feel light in the seat as you're going over the top, the blood is still going to your feet, not to your head. And you're going to float that all the way over here till about the middle of quarter number three. After that, 
then the airplane is going to start speeding up. And here's where you start slowly getting back into the, getting the stick back. And uh, as you increase speed, you're going to be pulling more and more Gs. And you want to get back to what you entered with. So you're going to be finishing at uh, about the same speed that you entered. And you're going to be pulling about the same G as when you entered. Okay? So let's talk about where you look. Because the key to any aerobatic maneuver is where to look and when. So in this particular case, as you go from level flight to the middle of quarter number two, you're not looking over the nose. Now some books will tell you to look over the nose until you get about 20 degrees nose up and then shift your view to your sight gauge or your wingtip and uh, fly that against the horizon. And I have found that it's hard for students to quickly move their head from looking at one thing and then looking at another acquiring the new target, and then thinking about how they need to move the flight controls to get the airplane against that target like they want, so that they're not flying with a low wing as they're pulling up to vertical, or that they're, uh, that they're not letting the airplane roll and they're staying on their heading. Okay? And when I talk about heading, one of the best ways to learn how to do a loop is find one long road and start on the road, looking down the road, and then when you're over the top here, you can look at the road again and then try to bring the nose down along that road and stay exactly vertical along that road and on the same heading that you don't pull off uh, one way or the other. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to be, I normally recommend that after they dive and get their entry speed, they go ahead and look to their sight gauge or to their wingtip. And then they keep looking that way all the way from the beginning to the middle of quarter number two. Now, once you get to the middle of quarter number two, here's where you shift your gaze. Instead of looking at the sight gauge, now you're going to crank your head back as, as hard as you can and look at the horizon behind you. So here was the horizon, the first horizon, and then now as you're here, you want to try to look to the horizon that was behind you. Now your sight line is going to be like this, and now the nose is coming over the top, and you want to keep looking to the horizon, and then here's where you want to make sure that you don't drop a wing and that you don't let the nose get off of your heading. Because at this point, when you have the horizon behind you in sight, hopefully you'll be getting your road in sight. And so now as you're coming over, you can make your corrections. And as the nose comes down, it will now meet your uh, sight line. And now you keep the two together for the rest of the loop as you finish quarter number three and go into quarter number four and coming around the bottom. So. Your primary flight control at this point is going to be your elevator, because that's what's going to pull you around the loop. You're going to think of your rudder and your ailerons as trimming devices, trying to keep the airplane exactly on plane and keep this loop perfectly vertical as you go around. Now right here, as people pull vertical, if they don't keep their sight gauge pointed where it needs to be, here's where they can get off of vertical without realizing it. When a wing gets low, they're pulling the whole loop off heading, or excuse me, off of vertical. And so if they don't, if that's the first mistake they make and nothing else changes, then they're going to finish over there instead of straight down back to their road, right? So, so that's where the first mistake is going to be made, getting a wing low. The other thing that will get them off of having a vertical loop is if they let the airplane roll a little bit. And so if you let the airplane roll, then when you start pulling on the back side, now you're going to finish off over here. So you got to be careful about that. So, but when you're vertical, if you're looking to the horizon, it's your sight gauge, and make sure you don't have a low wing. That takes care of that. But you also want to make sure the wingtip is not walking across the horizon. So as you come across the top, now as you're looking to the horizon behind you in sight and you're looking at the road, here is where you're going to be making sure that your yaw is not off, that your nose is pointing down the, down the road. Uh, <laughs> back toward the way that you just came from, and that you want to make sure that you don't have a low wing here. Okay? Now, as you come over the top, and you're looking down on the road, here's where it gets pretty easy. So here, you're making sure that you add enough rudder to where you don't have, to where the nose is not pulling off to one side or the other of the road. You don't really need to look at the wingtip at this point, since you have the road to look at for this. And you can see if your bank is wrong, and you're, not, and you're pulling yourself away from the road. Okay? And again, it's increasing G, increasing speed as you finish. Now, aerobatic judging standard. 
people will tend to finish the loop high. And what that means is that whatever their entry altitude was, they will finish above that, okay? And that is a downgrade. You, always, you don't want to finish low either, but the point is you want to finish exactly, just like this is drawn, you want to finish exactly as you started. So as you come over the top, what you're going to find is that you're just a little bit slower here than you were when you were here. So if you pulled, say, uh, three and a half Gs here, you might want to pull just a little bit less there or else you'll tend to finish high. So again, the last part is making sure that the loop is round. This is the hard part right in here. So as you come over the top, it, do it doesn't look like a long uh, distance uh, physically, but timing-wise, it's very different. And so, because you're going very fast here, you're going very slow across the top and then very fast to finish. And so, and it's a funny thing about perception. If you're in the airplane and the airplane and the, and the loop feels like you've drawn it round to a ground observer, it will actually look tall, like a cursive L. And the perception is that from the pilot's point of view, if the, if the loop feels like a football laid on its side, you know, and it's quick, 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 slow, 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 quick, 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 quick. If it feels like it's really short vertically and bulged out horizontally, believe it or not, from a ground observer, it will look fairly round. So those are the big things for judging is you're being judged by center of gravity track all the way around. You're judged by how round the loop is and you're judged if you finish at the same altitude that you began. Now a loop has to be wind corrected. So if you have a lot of headwind, you're gonna to have to ease off the G a little bit here and let the loop bulge out a little bit and then the wind will bring it back. And then conversely, when you're on the back side of the loop, the wind's gonna be trying to round out the loop too much and you'll have to pull it in, okay? So you have to wind correct. So as we do the loop, for the first third of the loop, you're going to be looking at towards your sight gauge. Okay, so I'm going to line up on this uh, railroad track. Use that as my reference for the loop. Starting, I'm going to try and start and finish at the same altitude of 5,000 feet. You can see the altitude increasing, airspeed decreasing. Now I'm going to tip the head back, catch the horizon, and level the wings. Line it up with the railroad using rudder to keep the nose coming right along that line and see if we can come back to the same altitude. Looks like we finished about 200 feet high. So I'll try that one again. You said we would finish high, didn't we? Yes. Um, and whatever G you pull in the beginning, you want to pull just a little bit less G at the end or else you'll tend to finish high. Okay, lining up with, made a 180 turn. I'm going to line up with that railroad again. Bringing in the power, I want to start this loop at the uh, in the yellow arc, and we're at 4,900 feet. Yeah, so you'll see him watching the wing tips and looking at his sight gauge to make sure he doesn't have a low wing. A little bit better wings level this time, and there's the road, the railroad. I'm gonna bring the nose right along that. Mm -hmm. And as you're coming down like this, you'll need to use a little bit of rudder one side or the other so the nose doesn't yaw left or right from okay. your Looks like it brought it right back to the altitude this time. Yeah.